You've probably noticed that I deal a lot with European monarchs and monarchy in general on this YouTube channel. Unfortunately for me, monarchy has slightly fallen out of fashion these days, with only some European countries keeping their crowns. And even those confine their royals to a powerless position of figureheads. Besides the 12 monarchies, the rest of Europe subscribes to the Republican idea, even though most of them have a long history of kingdoms and empires. So, let's say that all of a sudden they were all to drop their Republican ideas and revert to monarchies. Who would be their new rulers? Let's find out. Well, for the kingdoms of the UK, Spain, Netherlands, Belgium, Norway and Sweden, principalities of Andorra, Liechtenstein and Monaco, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg and the Vatican City, the answer is nowhere. Each of these countries has their own respective monarch, except for Andorra which has two, one of which is Emmanuel Macron for some odd reason. Most of these royals are in one way or another related to each other, but luckily, intermarrying and incest have also slightly fallen out of fashion in recent years. I won't go over them since they're not the subject of today's video. Now, let's start from the north downwards. Iceland had been for a long time a client state, first under the Norwegians, but that was a long time ago, and then to the Danish. So, the kings of Denmark were by extension kings of Iceland, with King Christian X being the final one. When the Nazis took over Denmark, the people of Iceland decided that perhaps having a Nazi puppet king wasn't all that great, so they declared their independence and proclaimed the republic. It has been that way ever since, but if they were to restore their monarchy today, the most legitimate claim would be again with the king of Denmark, or should I say queen, because the current monarch is Margaret II. Finland could go one of three ways. Since it had been for a long time in part of Sweden, the current Swedish king Karl XVI could be considered legitimate. You could also consider the House of Romanov to have a claim, since Finland has been a part of Russia for about a hundred years, though I doubt that the Finnish would like that. There was another little experiment where Wilhelm II's brother-in-law, Friedrich Charles, was given the throne of Finland after the Brest-Litovsk Treaty, but then went nowhere and the guy renounced the throne himself without ever setting foot in Iceland. If we trace that line, Finland would be a kingdom under King Donatus. Also surprisingly, it would have connections to the Royal House of Yugoslavia. Estonia and Latvia were both parts of Russia up until fairly recently, so the Russian pretender to the throne would be the most legitimate king of both, which means that the two states could enter into a personal union with one another, or Finland as well. Lithuania is a little more complicated. We can also take the Russian prince route just like the previous two, or we could take a guy called Inigo von Urich, Urich, whatever, the grandson of Wilhelm Karl von Urich, aka Minigaus II, who was proclaimed king for a few months after Brest-Litovsk. Oh Russia, how messy you are. It just so happens that none of Tsar Nicholas's brothers had children, so when he was murdered, there were no clear successors, since most of his brothers were also killed. Now we have to look at his uncles, and luckily there is one guy with children, and that's Grand Duke Kirill. He was the official and undisputed head of the house in exile, and when he died, his claim orderly passed on to his son Vladimir. Now, the issue lies with Vladimir's marriage to a woman of lower rank. He was married to a Georgian princess, Leonida of Bagrationi family, which ruled Georgia since the Middle Ages, but for some reason she was considered of lower rank. So some dispute the claim of Vladimir's daughter Maria. The other claimant is a guy called Nicholas, who is a successful businessman and the czar of an unrecognized microstate called the Imperial Throne. Yeah, look it up. Maria has the support of the church, while Nicholas is backed by the monarchist party of Russia. Of course, Putin isn't going anywhere, and these two can only bicker behind the scenes. The czar of Russia would also by default be the ruler of Belarus and Ukraine as well, ironically. Poland is one interesting specimen because, while still an independent kingdom during the 16th and 1700s, the position of king was elective, so you can't really say who has the best claim. We can look at the descendants of the last Polish king Stanislaw Augustus and his house of Poniatowski, though his descendants are scattered all over the world and I couldn't find the current head. We could draw a connection to the Duchy of Warsaw and its only Duke Friedrich Augustus from the house of Wetlin, so following that line, the king of Poland would be Michael, Prince of Saxe Weimar Eisenach. Two other possibilities could be considered, because, after Brest-Litovsk, Poland considered two people for the throne. One was Prince Kirill of Bulgaria, who didn't have children, so the title could either have gone to his older brother, Tsar Boris III, or less likely one of his two sisters. The other candidate was Archduke Charles Stephen, a member of a Habsburg side branch. Following that branch, we would get to Maria Christina of Altenburg. Answers for Germany and Austria are fairly simple. The current head of House of Hohenzollern is Prince George Friedrich, great-great-grandson of Wilhelm II, and currently lives in Germany. For the Habsburgs, the head is Prince Karl, now a politician in Austria. Karl would also be a candidate for Czechia and Slovakia as well, though the Esterhazy family could also work for Slovakia, even though they were never really kings. For Hungary, we can give a simple and a not-so-simple answer. 
Since Wagner had been under the Habsburg dynasty since 1526, the logical first choice would be the current head of the Habsburg house. But in 1923, after Charles IV tried and failed to re-establish himself in Hungary, a law was passed that nullified all of his and his descendants' rights to the throne. So, if we were to make Hungary a kingdom, we would either have to allow Habsburg to return or choose someone new. Romania and Bulgaria aren't really a problem. After the fall of communism, their royal families have returned home and are active in political lives of their respective countries. Romania would be a kingdom under Queen Maria, daughter of King Michael, while Bulgaria would be a tsardom under Tsar Simeon II once again, since he is still alive. In Greece, there would be a similar situation, though their last king died this year, so the throne would go to Prince Pavlos. Serbia, Bosnia and Macedonia have clear-cut answers. The Karadjordje's dynasty, which ruled the kingdom of Yugoslavia until its abolition, and whose current head is crowned Prince Alexander. Montenegro can also fall into here, though there is also the Petrovic option, since the dynasty still exists and currently resides in Montenegro. By this rule, we can also sort Croatia and Slovenia into this renewed Yugoslavia, but for them there are a few other options. For Croatia there is the Italian option, since the last king of Croatia was Prince Simon of Italy, who took the name of Tomislav II. Yeah, the Nazi puppet independent state of Croatia was actually a kingdom, though the king held literally zero power and never even went there. Slovenia, due to its cultural ties to Germanic countries, could also accept the Habsburgs on the throne, while Croatia could renew the personal union with Hungary. The king of Albania would be either a descendant of King Zog, or precisely his grandson Leka, who looks like a strange mix of Mr. Beast and Michael Serra, or the king of Italy, since the last monarch of Albania was Vittorio Emanuele III. When it comes to Italy, we first have to overlook the fact that restoring the monarchy is constitutionally forbidden. Even then, the answer to who would be king remains a little complicated. Currently, there are two claimants. The legitimate one is very unpopular, it has the support of nobody. Meanwhile, the legitimate one has the support of all Italian monarchists, all five of them. The latter guy, Prince Simone, grandson of the Croatian King Simone, is also the King of Jerusalem. So, since he has the cooler title, let's go with him. Switzerland seems to not have anyone negligible to be its king, though, researching the topic, I found out that it actually isn't true. Switzerland is, in fact, a kingdom, under what I assume is a vampire king called Alexander I, from the house of Kroshbon, who has been in power since 1747. Though his beginnings were rough, with his mother being a Norwegian spy, Alexander was exiled to fucking Yucatan until he decided to not be exiled anymore and returned home. Then he staged a coup, fought in the Swiss Civil War and the War of Sardinian Succession, and a lot more. I suggest you click the link in the description and learn more about the centuries-long Swiss-Norwegian rivalry and the Vampire King. It truly is whack in the best way possible. Now, where were we? France has two options, either the Bonaparte route or the Bourbon route. The House of Bonaparte is currently split between two guys, while the Bourbons are a lot more simple, with only one guy as the head. If he came to power, he would be King Louis XX. We could also count the descendants of King Louis Philippe of Orléans, so that his great-great-whatever-grandson Jean could also be king. Portugal can also be simply regulated, since they have a clear heir to the throne, that being Duarte Pio of Braganza. Since the Irish would probably suffer a rage-induced heart attack if I merely mentioned the British king ruling over them again, I'll skip that possibility altogether and discuss some others. Since Ireland was never an independent kingdom, we have to look at several proposals in order to find the one. The first possibility was presented during the First World War, when the Irish made plans to make Prince Joachim of Germany, Wilhelm II's youngest son, the King of Ireland. Though, when the Germans lost the war, that idea was dismissed. Then there were plans to give the prominent O'Neill family the crown. An Irish politician called Eamon de Valera also thought that maybe he should wear the crown. So, if we follow the German line, we would have King Franz Wilhelm, whose son and heir George could also be the heir to the Russian throne, therefore making this unholy Russo-Irish union. If we follow the Valera line, we could have his unnamed descendants, and if we follow the O'Neill line, we could possibly have King Ben O'Reilly or King Stephen Colbert, or maybe even this guy. Here's a wacky little map to show you the new face of Europe. This is mainly it. If you are mad that I forgot smaller countries like Cyprus and Malta, don't worry, they'd be under the British. Thanks for watching, and please sign a petition to make me king of something. Have a good day.